so I want to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from the lands of the Guyamagal people. Um, I'd like to extend my respect to elders past and present and any First Nations people watching. Sovereignty was never ceded. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Hi, everybody. For anyone who doesn't know, my name is Ange, and today we are chatting about the incredible Netflix series, Worry and None, and the representation the show provides for such a broad, diverse group of communities. Joining me today is the staff-wielding, ass-kicking sister warrior, tasked with protecting the warrior nun. Quiet, intelligent, charming sister Beatrice uh, didn't only find her way into Ava's heart, as we see in season two, but into the hearts of every fan who has enjoyed this series. Um, she's one half of the incredible ship Avatris. Um, it's an honor, a privilege to welcome the incredible Christina Todd Terry Young. Yay. Hence. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure Thank to be you. here. Thank you for reaching out on Twitter. That was an awesome like way of getting a whole lot of yeah, people to want not? to talk I mean, to. Yeah, why not? I mean, it was uh, it was a great thing that fans actually recommended that I would speak to you. So I was like, yeah, why not? I saw that. I was you like, feed oh. them, feed them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, feed the fans. You don't know if you read the questions, but this is an Avatris heavy interview. So uh, yes, we will I do. feed. I'll also say at the right now that this is going to be a spoiler heavy interview. So if you haven't yeah. watched Warrior Nun, first of all, what the hell are you doing here? Second of all, go watch it right now. Um, Stream yeah. it on Netflix immediately and then come back. Turn your ass back around. <laughs> Literally, get back there and then come back. Yeah. In your own words, who is Sister Beatrice to you? She is... Well, she's a very grounded, yet not grounded, full of, like, controversial little, like, oppositions. Yeah, I feel like she's, especially that now as we can see her journey through season two, I think we get closer to who she is, really. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, we see her as this very calm and, you know, calm and collected person, yeah. always a step ahead of everybody. Um, and then everything kind of starts to unravel, and that's where it gets interesting, I think, in season two, is when you start to see a collected character start to... Yeah. unravel at the ends and, and yeah. at the seams and that's when the real real person gets out so I think um in season two we get to see her much more impulsive much more um easily aggravated <laughs> and uh <laughs> a little bit of jealousy peeking in through there as well Hold yes on, a little bit is like an elephant being <laughs> yeah <forced>. exactly <laughs> <laughs> I love watching a character have like sort of the like stick pulled out of their back you know their posture yeah. being forced to relax in that sort of metaphorical and also in Beatrice's sense like a very literal way like she was very yeah. cool and in season two we sort of see her not slouching but sort of relaxing into herself and how, how was it for you to sort of come back because it was a big break between season mm -hmm. one and season two so how was it for you to sort of re-enter Beatrice but also that like shift for her if you know what I mean I think the shift actually helped a lot um yeah I think it would have been very hard to just recreate something exactly that you've yeah. done, you know, two something years ago. Yeah, um, because we've all grown as people. I think as actors as well, we've we've all grown as people in the meantime. So it would have been an interesting challenge to go to something exactly the same. But yeah. um, not you know, it was very interesting. It took a little bit, I think, for me to kind of get back into the shoes. They yeah. were a little tight somewhere and a little <laughs> loose somewhere else, and you're like, oh. I think a few a few reads of the script and I was like oh okay I get it I get it yeah, <laughs> I get yeah. why I did that now <laughs> but you what found was, it again. what was two years ago Christina thinking <laughs> so <laughs> what, you were like 22 long. when the first season was done yeah yeah, yeah I, I believe so yeah. what is anybody thinking when they're 22 though you know what I mean <laughs> like God knows. God knows. Um, <laughs> the ensemble cast worrying on is something that I love so much about the show because you so rarely mm -hmm. get you know this beautiful very cohesive ensemble of so many yeah. international um, sort of personalities coming into it. Got Sylvia DeFanti, who's just an amazing Italian comedian, which is just yes. incredible and playing this sort of very serious, but also with those edges of comedy we see peeking through in um, season two, if I'm talking about that truck yeah. scene, which is one of my favorite moments of season two. <laughs> I just, I... I wish I'd been there when they were filming it. <laughs> the way she just slowly takes she the pulls up. Yeah, and she just pulls it up and looks at it and just goes, mm, I guess. <laughs> yeah, food's food, which like valid. And then Olivia Del Can is incredible as Camilla. Oh Mina Ray coming in. Again, and an another Yasmin as another Yasmin, thank you. beautiful yeah. comedian. Yes. Uh, and she just has this effortless comedy. Yeah, bringing that like awesome like levity to these really, you know, quite yeah. serious, hard to hard to process moments. And then you've got Lorea Andrea as Lilith just smashing yeah. it with that like moral ambiguity and dark. so how yeah. is it for you to work in this incredible cast of big international personalities well I think it's kind of started off very early in the beginning we just kind of met each other and then it kind of just worked 
um like I didn't we never did at least I didn't do any kind of chemistry reads or anything so it was very much amazing choices by casting and by by um everybody who was involved in, in picking us to know that we would all get along so yeah. well already really really good judges of character there <laughs> um yeah no we we kind of just hit it off and there was this kind of unity in us in inside our group from the very beginning that that we never really needed to grow or, or you know artificially foster it just kind of we just went out and got coffee a few times and then went out and got smashed a few times and then it. It. <laughs> exactly that, that's all you need you just get absolutely yeah. destroyed with people and then you're you're with them for life I, yeah there's I, nothing that you can hide anymore that they wouldn't have already seen so now you've seen me at my worst. <laughs> yes, yes. So that you can enjoy me when I'm at my best. <laughs> exactly. That's really lovely to hear. And like, you can absolutely see how much you enjoy being in each other's company with the way that you act with each other, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I think you can always tell when there are people on screen, you're like, mm, they don't like each other. Like, no matter how good an actor is, there's like a weird vibe coming through. Um, so bad no, vibes, it is... Bad vibes literally like you just go Ooh, no thank you I'm not gonna yeah. say anything about don't worry darling but like you know um <laughs> we just get it yeah just... uh yeah so I what yeah that's something that I really loved As, again watching season two was just yeah. the fact that you all look like you love each other so much and look very comfortable um so yeah I want to talk a little bit about the action of in warrior nun because it is so mm -hmm. central and so um important to the plot but also just important to everybody watching because it's just incredible yeah. like the the stunt work and the actual like special effects and everything Beatrice had some incredible fight scenes this season mm -hmm. um how are those for you to film because they look so fun they are very fun uh yeah. they are also very very hard um one of the reasons why is that she has a very specific style yeah um that kind of lends itself from Chinese martial arts, wushu, all of that. So it's a very specific, lyrical, um, yep. flowing movement. Yep. And if you don't do it just right, it looks really bad. Uh, <laughs> so patience of saints from yeah. the stunt team for for training <laughs> uh, with us and with me to to get that right. Obviously, Joe is is amazing, my stunt double. Yeah, I think like there's a few fight scenes that were really long takes. Yep. and those are definitely the most fun to film because you actually feel like you're in the middle of a fight because there's no like you do like three moves and then they cut it's like yeah. you have to do it from the beginning to the end and wow. then you're like <laughs> yeah okay beat some people up. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible as well because they react as if you're hitting them really hard yeah and you're not but you feel like wow I'm super powerful right now like this man just went flying <laughs> I was like threw him like, through the I, wall I didn't I didn't even touch him like he just threw himself through the wall I'm like I respect that though <laughs> <laughs> the huge respect that I've got for stunt people they just like imagine going to work every day being like I'm gonna get thrown into a wall today you know what I mean like it's yeah, very I'm gonna fall off a building or, yeah, or I'm it's... just gonna get punched in the face continuously it's incredible <laughs> they all deserve to be recognized a little bit more oh my goodness yeah as like you they know do some crazy stuff from like yeah. I, I would do that once and be in the ER <laughs> literally I'd be like fetal <laughs> positioning on the ground <laughs> Please, stop, please don't. Which was your favorite of the um of the scene of the fight scenes for you to um the church film? fight, the church fight. I think yeah, yeah. Because it was we were all fighting at the same time in different little locations. We had our little pockets where stuff was going on, and then we cross each other. We see each other. We do something together, and then yeah. off we go into another fight. You know, a, a, another meter away. Yeah. And it really it that really felt like you were in the middle of a chaotic yeah fight. That was the most fun I think, and the little. The little switches and the you know sometimes you don't notice and sometimes you kind of notice yep. a switching and but the timing of it everything had to be like smack right timing like yep. there's a part where Beatrice gets shoved into the wall like that's not me but I'm the one who goes under and then we had to like I had okay. to crawl out from under and then she comes in and then she gets slammed against the wall and then she crawls up and I crawl <laughs> back in it just continues just really you had to get the timing perfectly right and then they only had a certain number of breakable benches and then one of them broke by accident and oh, you know, all of this everything has to go like perfectly yeah yeah so that one was definitely fun we spent a while on that one and it yeah. was well worth it Oh, absolutely. That was a beautiful scene. Also the church that you're, you filmed most of that, most of the season in and around Madrid. Madrid, beautiful. Toledo, a little bit, I think you're a little further north from Madrid. There was a Swiss town. I also want to talk about your sort of physical comedy that you had this season, because 
there was yeah. these beautiful little pocket moments. Um, my favorite was you getting just done with the tranquilizer dart and um, Albert oh, yeah. dragging you through Madrid. How is it to you sort of sort of tap into that when we do see Beatrice very, you know, straight laced a lot of the time? How is it to find I that? Feel, you know, I feel like that's just me. <laughs> that's just I, one of the fans said it on Twitter earlier, like this week, where I was like, that's, "Yeah, they're they're right. That's just me." <laughs> Um, this is just how I would act if I got tranquilized. Yeah. This, this ridiculous human being who cannot stand <laughs> straight. But no, I think it's fun. I, I, I love playing physical comedy more than anything. My background is in dance and, and a lot of like different physical um, disciplines. So I, I really enjoy nonverbal comedy a lot. Yeah. Um, like the, the moment where I just like fucking throat that guy. Yeah. <laughs> when, they're, when they're interrogating him, I was like, oh, sorry. Um, moments like those where you put a character who really doesn't belong in that state in this moment in in this in yeah. these surroundings and you put them there and you're just like okay survive and that character is like what yeah yeah, um, but yeah <laughs> work those it are out my favorite kinds of yeah. work it out <laughs> yeah um, those are definitely my favorite kinds of of, of little comedy scenes yeah so. I love the moment where we're in the um Ava's dragging me through the the rows in the in the movie theater yeah and I just like sit down yep. and start watching the movie. I'm like, oh, this is a great one. I've never seen this movie before. I think there was there was a shot in which I actually tripped over someone and just fully ate it on the on the floor of the cinema. Sadly, oh that didn't God. make the final yeah. cut. Oh my God, that I get it, but it would have been might have hilarious. been overkill. <laughs> Poor Alba. I remember just there was a person there, and I just like tried to get over the legs, but it wasn't even because I was acting too much. It was just literally they had long legs and I was like trying to get over them and I just <laughs> ate it it was amazing God. and I think I smacked my head on the on the door when we were coming in one time and like yeah and so it's just that just proves my point it's just me yeah <laughs> so god let's hope I never get tranquilized because it'll be even worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> are you like a naturally clumsy-ish person or are you more I feel like it's like yes and no like yeah. sometimes I'm very agile and and like very much in control of my body yeah but then sometimes I just like do the dumbest things <laughs> <laughs> I call it something I, else and it's like oh it's a wall <laughs> yeah yeah valid I call I get baby horse syndrome is what I call it it's where I'm like just yeah. stop thinking about what my body is doing in a space and then I just <laughs> yeah I, like just... I've walked into glass doors before <laughs> sometimes it just do be happening you know <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> do be happening. Let's talk about Avatress because everyone wants us to get there and we were always going yeah. to get there. Um, so it really cemented the show in the hearts of so many fans, I think. You don't see such quality representation on screen often enough um, for mm -hmm. characters not only discovering who they are in a moment, but characters who have gone through it and discovering mm -hmm. how they're feeling about another person. Um, yeah. So, and we really see that in season two, like come to fruition. One of my favorite parts of the Avatress story, this, we're going to touch on sort of all of the different elements, but one of my favorite was the young love, like yeah. vibe emerging from them, um, which I think is really in those first few episodes. The one bedroom flat, I saw on Twitter, the decision for one bedroom, hilarious, very yeah. funny. And then the bar scene and all the flirting. How did you enjoy sort of exploring that? Well, very much. Um, yeah. I think also it, it came kind of naturally as as we were shooting season one as well. It, it kind of, as Alba and I got to know each other more, more was required from Ava and Beatrice in terms of emotional connection. So it actually just stacked back up perfectly. Nice. Um, so it wasn't like we had to go in on the first day and be like, no, kiss. Um, <laughs> yes. So, but I do, yeah, by the end when there was like that moment where they're staring into each other's eyes after she comes out of the concrete, um, we did have a few good laughs um, about, I think the direction was like to stare into each other, just stare into each other's eyes for 10 seconds and don't do anything. Wow. Okay. And then we did some, I think we did exactly that. And they were like, okay, do something more. <laughs> but no, it was, it was never, you know, an arduous process. It just kind of built on itself naturally. Um, yeah. And I think that continued in, in season two. And with the changes in our characters in season yeah. two, as we've kind of developed over the last few months, that time time gap that we have, you know, by that time, Alba and I have already known each other for two and a half years. So yeah, it's pretty easy to pick up off where we left. No, yeah. That's awesome. You mentioned the jealousy 
earlier. That scene at the in the bar where um the the other girl is coming in and talking to Beatrice. What was that like for you to bring that level of jealousy? Because it was it was very it was like innocent jealousy. It was like you know again mm-hmm. that young love jealousy. There was no it didn't feel like toxic. you don't quite know what it is. Yeah, literally. Yeah. How was it treading that line? Well, I mean, the nice thing is that they showcase jealousy on both sides. So yeah. it was kind of like a seesaw, I think, yeah. very much for, for them, where it's like, you know, that moment where like one person is looking and the other person is not looking and then they turn away and then the other person starts yeah. looking. It's always yeah. doing this kind of like seesaw. Yeah. I mean, that scene where the where the girl starts talking to Beatrice is, I mean, I felt extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> I was sitting there like I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be talking to this woman. I should like, <laughs> like no. the like, girlfriend's I'll, watching. It was gonna be mad. <laughs> Who am I to be jealous if I'm not? I can't even. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, it was super fun to do that scene, and and the other actress, she was wonderful as well. We had a lot, a lot of fun, and it's such a small scene, but it it shows us a lot about yeah. Ava and Beatrice. There's a lot of talk about whether or not it is the kiss at the end of the season is Beatrice's first kiss. To me, that scene and the way that Beatrice was very like, <laughs> like, like sort of yeah. condensing herself, it sort of suggested that maybe it was that she hadn't been in that situation um, mm. before. What do you think about that? I don't think I've quite made up my mind, but I do have a few. I did have a few thoughts at the time. Um, yeah. If it's not her first kiss, then the well, it's definitely the first time she's been kissed since before she went into the convent. Yeah. So it's the first time where she is allowing herself to be kissed and not feeling bad about it or yeah. not feeling like she's going to get in trouble over it or maybe she is but it's not not in the forefront of her mind you know yeah okay. and I feel like she would have been so young when she entered the convent and the service that I think those kisses would have not it wouldn't wouldn't have been the same but if it is, then, you know, the stiffness can just be, you know, oh my goodness, imagine <laughs> my first kiss. Uh, <laughs> but I, I feel like I played the stiffness as this actually means something. Yeah. That moment of like, not 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 responding, but very much being like, <gasps> yeah, the possible trauma of potentially mm. having been through something like that before and then gotten into horrible trouble over it. Yeah. Uh, trouble that would have changed the course of her life. So feeling that all over again and then allowing yourself to feel what you want to feel about the situation. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to play. <laughs> I think you did it perfectly. And I, it's like a hugely um, like vulnerable state for her to put herself in, like in that incredibly intensely emotional situation already, right? Like, you know, mm. there's 10 million things going on and then to allow herself to be vulnerable in that moment. Yeah. It's very brave. And I think it just points to what a intensely um, brave and giving character Beatrice is. Warrior Nun is as powerful as it is because of the representation that it gives. And you sort of stand at the forefront of that. So it's a credit to you and to your empathy that the fans love this show so much, in my opinion. And also that the show is as successful as it is. So my thanks well, thank is you. to you. And uh, and I know that- And my thanks is to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we wouldn't be here without everybody else to watch the show. Sort of on the other end of that spectrum, um, away from the young love, away from that newness of a, of a budding mm-hmm. relationship, the pair are literally grappling with life and death the entire mm-hmm. season. The moment where Ava falls from the sky and dies, not really, but dies, it almost caused me to have to pause. <laughs> like, I was very much like, ooh, mm-hmm. I need a second. Um, Feelings. <laughs> literally. There's always that back and forth of protecting one another, one of you getting in peril, one of you, you know, doing that um, yeah. that sort of, like the seesaw, but the less fun seesaw of the season, maybe. Yeah, um, the seesaw of terror. Yeah. <laughs> How was it for you to play that darkness of the relationship, the sort of um, grief that existed before the grief happened? Well, I guess it's, it's the same as you feel anytime you think about losing anything that's, that's the dearest to you in the world. Yeah. Um, and seeing that possibility or almost come true multiple times over and over again, it's kind of like traumatizing yourself over yeah. and over again. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy doing emotional scenes. Um, I think they're the most fun. Yeah. They're the most surprising. You know, something always surprises you. Some thought that you didn't think would make you cry or you didn't think that would affect you yeah. in, in some emotional way that that does. And and it's it's tech it's technique. 
it's a lot of just technique. It's about controlling your thoughts until that very moment where you have you have to let go. Yeah. But I enjoy doing all of that. I I like to see how far I can push myself. <laughs> nice. And of course, oh, awesome. of course, seeing Alba laying dead in a pool of blood is not, you know, yeah. ideal. <laughs> yeah, so I can that imagine. That helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. The shot of the back of her head was gnarly as well. Gnarly. Like, <laughs> oh, I was, because I was looking, like, yeah, I was very close goes- you. Oh. <laughs> yeah because I, I was focused on you and then I like looked and I was like ah. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I didn't even I, I didn't pay much attention to it except that they were like try not to touch the very bloody parts because then we're gonna have to match yeah, the blood yeah. like smudges on you yeah so I was trying to like not touch her in the very bloody part because then I have to clean the hand and re re-blood yeah. the hand exactly the same but then I was like looking at it and I was like my hand is like right there and the thing is right there and I was mm. like <laughs> wow yeah yeah no it was real close yeah then recently I also got a big, big bang on the head and I, I had something quite similar and I was like yeah it looks pretty disgusting yeah gross I'm sorry that that happened yeah. to you that's not good no it's okay I was, I was doing a leisurely sports activity I, I have had um, quite a lot of concussions. So whenever anyone says they've gotten a, you know, bad knock on their head, I'm immediately like, eh! yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> so. it, looked, it looked pretty badass, though, I've got to say. I'm kind of sad it didn't scar a little bit more because then I could just be like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> they like shave just that portion of your head just to be like look no they didn't even shave it they just stapled like my hair into the face they were like here you go it'll be fine <laughs> be on your merry way <laughs> you're gonna be fine i was like thank you and then that's six hundred dollars oh my like, god was that i'll do it myself <laughs> Just get a stapler. <laughs> yeah, good luck, good luck. I've had that happen a couple of times in my head. I go to the doctor, I get that for free. So Exactly, as you should. I have, I have a hole in my head. Yeah, literally. It's like, hey, I can't fix this one on my own. Can you do that? Do something about that, please? Lend so, me a uh, hand. The, the the wound resealing itself was pretty uh Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, yeah. it was incredible, in- incredible CG. Beautiful. If you, when after you watch it, you're like, Hup. and then you but, suddenly like, try and zoom in, you're like, whoa. Yeah, literally, I know. I kept stopping. I was like, you know, when you like do net, you like keep hitting space to like make it go really slowly. I was like doing that, and yeah. I was just like watching it, like knit <laughs> itself back together. So yeah. cool. I also want to talk about really briefly the like emotional maturity that we do see from Ava and from Beatrice, mm-hmm. sort of throughout the season, because that's something you don't see very often in sort of any relationship especially between young people on screen it's always feels very reactionary um you know mm-hmm. something happens and the other one gets mad and they walk away um <laughs> but yeah you know and then the, the other one's like oh no it's all my fault and literally and then it spirals, spirals. down exactly. this path of toxicity exactly so like what I love so much is that we pretty much completely avoided that for Ava and Beatrice in season two yeah. and that moment of them sitting um on the couch before they know about Mary's death was really mm-hmm. just it felt it just how you're screamed. supposed to do it. <laughs> it just screamed healthy relationship <laughs> yeah was that something that you guys sort of went into it thinking about when you were doing those conflict moments or was it something that was just in the writing or it was in the writing yeah I mean it was in, it was incredible that we really didn't need to speak about it that much we kind of just yes. first we blow up and then we make up you know as it should be um it was already in the writing we didn't have to have a very long I don't remember a very long conversation about about that I think we just we just worked out the little nuances in like positioning ourselves and and how we could best yeah. convey that moment but yeah I think the moment was already there yeah definitely lovely. so let's just talk about the sort of final moments of Ava and Beatrice and then sort of the final moments with Beatrice in the series so very intense very sad but also very hopeful sort uh Mm -hmm. would be the energy that I'd sort of attribute to it a question I think a lot of the fans want an answer to even if it's not the answer but your answer to would be why do you feel that Beatrice waited to say that she loved Ava back until Ava had through the portal well I, I don't think she consciously waited yeah if she had said it immediately after, it would have also felt like she was letting her go. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like she didn't want to let her go. So she didn't say it immediately because she yep. still thought they had more time. And then saying it kind of fast and late was like, a, oh shit, like I've, I've missed the bus. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So I, I don't think it was a conscious like waiting yeah like um, it wasn't like I'm unsure of it it's just I was hoping that we would have more time for me to say yeah well that which makes it even sad yeah that's worse <laughs> that's so much worse <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like um, I, what I did really like was that there was no goodbyes. When writing does that, when there's a parting of ways, when it feels like a I'll see you soon as opposed mm-hmm. to a this is the end. Um, and I think yeah. that's sort of what gave a lot of hope to that moment was that the final words weren't, you know, goodbye. It was, mm. I love you. Yeah, um, and I think we talked a lot about whether there should be another kiss at the end. Yeah. Um, and we decided to not have it in just because it, that's, I feel like the first kiss we'd, we'd earned yeah. throughout the season. And then I feel like we need it. It'll be much more satisfying when it happens again next time yes. when it doesn't happen within such a short period of time because the two kisses would have kind of conveyed the same feeling mm. and you'd want two kisses that contrast you have other. something different yeah no definitely yeah. i also think that a kiss there might have been read as a goodbye if you know what i yeah. mean it might be a it would and have we didn't that. want it to read as a goodbye no. i i i definitely understand that and i agree my opinion doesn't matter but i agree with you <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about how we left um Beatrice um you know from her waiting in the at the portal to her leaving the OCS yeah how do you feel about that sort of wrap up to season two well I mean I think she's uh you know she's going off to do what Ava told her to do to live her life uh, I don't exactly know what that means for her yet but um yeah she's gonna go out and and really discover herself and I yeah. think that's that's what that's what you do when somebody close to you goes away or, or, or yeah. passes away or you do what they you think they would want you to do. Yeah, absolutely. And what feels best for yourself. But, you know, I think right after Ava goes through the portal, there's that, like, panic moment. And then, I mean, some time has obviously passed between that moment where she's left sitting in front of the portal. Yeah. So, you know, I think, but I think as, as soon as Ava goes through the portal, she you knows she's going to leave. Yeah. So... When we were shooting it, we understood that she was leaving the OCS. Mm. But to do what exactly was not discussed <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, sushi restaurants were discussed, um, going sure. abroad, stuff yeah. like that, like anything. Um, but no, we didn't discuss anything, anything um, specific. Yeah. But I think it was definitely like she is, she is leaving the OCS or she is leaving being a nun, that she might still be involved with the OCS in some capacity but it won't be as a nun yeah I think talk about your relationship with Alba a little bit as a scene partner Mm -hmm. and just on set because I I purposely left her out earlier when we were talking about the ensemble so nobody get mad at me please I promise I didn't forget about her um how is it sort of working with her and like we talked a little bit about you coming back and stepping back into the shoes because I think I've heard you speak about in the past that the Avatris relationship was considered right from the start you always knew yeah that there was going to be that through line. Um, mm-hmm. How is it sort of stepping back in with Alba and going, okay, here's where we are. We're bringing it. Um, we're going to bring it in season two. We always have a lot of fun. Um, we're always fooling around on set when you should be. Um, and the, the scenes kind of, they just organize themselves. I don't think we, we've, I don't think we've ever run into a scene where we've had specifically between us trouble getting through a scene or not getting the timing right or stuff like that we always yeah. find find little things to fill the space and make it make it work and, mm-hmm. and make it flow and I think that's something that comes pretty pretty naturally between us uh, I mean we're, we're friends we're good friends so yeah um yeah a I, I, little bit of direction here and there and <laughs> and it all it all kind of becomes a nice Perfect. Cake. <laughs> no but yeah we always have a lot of fun and, and and even in the harder scenes we both know to give our give each other time and when it's the right time to make jokes and when it's not the right time to make jokes and yep. and I mean everybody in the cast does that so well um so yeah it was never never a chore <laughs> lovely that's, sure. that's good yeah. that's awesome again like I said earlier it is very clear that you guys like each other <laughs> at the very least yeah. are there sort of any little funny behind the scenes moments that you would like to share um with the fans from your experiences on season two there's so many <laughs> it's a very serious season. obviously there's one where I fell down in the aisles <laughs> and then there is the, then there was the one where I hit my head on the door which was closing and I was too slow to get to it that was also in the there's a bunch of them in the stunt sequences yeah. where stuff just happens and you're like, I 
<laughs> yeah. Like you accidentally actually hit someone or someone accidentally almost hits you because you're so bewildered because so much is going on yeah. around you. Yeah. There will oh though, oh my goodness, there's one. Yeah, there is one. I, I one day I will post the video of this because there is a video. Amazing. Um it's the first it was the first time that Alba and I were being flown up after the fight sequence in the church. Okay. And they had our stunt doubles rehearse it. Yep. And everything was fine. Yep. But because our stunt doubles are our weight is not exactly the same as our stunt doubles weight yeah yeah so it, we were being obviously manually hoisted up into the air with the rigs and everything and then they put us into the harnesses and mm. alba went flying <laughs> up into the air like like a rocket and i was like dragging on the ground <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> And obviously, we immediately started laughing like maniacs. Yeah. And there's like a very there was a scene in 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 midair that we were that we did where like the terrace grabs a hold of my ankle and like is trying trying to drag me down and I'm like telling Ava like let me go and she's yeah. like no and we're just laughing through this entire scene that's supposed to be so serious midair like swinging because like there was like a rope tied to my ankle which was the terrace yeah and it like, was, like pulling yeah okay being pulled. But when you're hanging by a rope and somebody's pulling you this way, when they let you go, you're going to swing. So we <laughs> yeah. were like swinging, trying to do this scene seriously. And on the audio of the playback, you can just hear us wheezing between the lines. <laughs> Some of the worst wire work I've ever done in my life. <laughs> um, so that was reshot um, in the studio. Uh, because that, was a, that was a car crash. Yes. Um, um, <laughs> I mean, it was it was fun, but it was it was a car crash. It sounds like a disaster. <laughs> yeah, and then we were like, oh, because we didn't we didn't do it before. We kind of they were like, oh, we'll shoot the rehearsal. So we were like, oh, sure, yeah. So it's not a rehearsal. <laughs> and it we came back down, and I turned. I think I remember turning to Alba and being like, it feels like taking off in an airplane, but there's no airplane. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you being hoisted. <laughs> yeah, it's like Wah! um. So that's probably the funniest funniest moment from uh from season two. Oh, yeah. my i'll remember God. that one fondly yeah <laughs> just me like dragged on the floor i was like i'm too high up now <laughs> and i was supposed to hold on to her and i couldn't hold on to her so i was like they're like you have to hold her closer i'm like i can only do it <laughs> if i'm close to her pull me up higher please i am a sad dumbbell oh, please pull me up goodness. higher. <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness that sounds... I mean, there's multiple, multiple little moments, but that one was a special one. That's, yeah. And I love that you've got a video of it. <laughs> we do. We, we, I filmed the playback, so I have that video. And you can hear us on the audio, like, saying the lines, trying to be very serious, but then just being like... <laughs> <laughs> if you mm. had the halo for a day, just one day, so you as Christina had the halo for one day, what would be... Um, me. Yeah. So what would be the first thing that you do go through walls i don't know fly yeah fly <laughs> going through walls is going through walls is pretty cool yeah definitely i'll walls, stay away that's... from the I'll, I'll stay away from the nearest bank i'll promise that when ava got stuck in the uh in the ceiling in season two and she's coming yeah. through she, she just <laughs> hit like, she's just like god not now <laughs> not the time I really would like to speak to Alba or to um, Lorena because I want to talk about that entire roof situation. That was a crazy oh, fight. Intense. Let's talk a little bit about the representation that Warrior Nun provides. Mm -hmm. It just gives such one visibility <laughs> and um, representation for so many diverse communities. The moment in season one where Beatrice comes out to Ava, it just spoke to the pain of being punished for your differences, right? And that mm -hmm. was just on a personal note, very painful for me because I've been through a very similar thing. I'm a non-binary person. I'm right. a queer person. I've experienced a lot of that. So right. what was it like for you to be a part of this project and to continue to be a part of this project that does strive to elevate the um, experiences of diverse communities? I mean, it's an, first, first, it's an honor. Second, it's a pleasure. I think if you have the opportunity, it's your duty. What Warrior Nun does so wonderfully is that it doesn't feel like it's be for being forceful about it. Yep. I think it's being, you know, it's making those moments that point out these this diversity and the, the, this inclusivity, making those moments heavier and they have the weight that they should. Um, but it doesn't mean that they're, you know, 
kicking a dead horse you know they, they're, yes. they're giving every moment the magnitude it deserves um without trying to gloss over anything and i think that's something that yeah i think that's something really important i think moments shouldn't be glossed over a lot of i think mainstream media tries to include things in a way that it's as if it's already always been there included yeah. and it that's not necessarily the case sometimes you do need to be like hey look you guys are all there yeah like, absolutely it's okay and it's not in like oh my god we ticked all the boxes but, yes <laughs> um yeah. it's in like a, a like look y'all are all there There's yeah nothing to worry about um and i think we do that very well Same. good some good ass writing <laughs> yes absolutely some good writing and some good casting well wonderful casting yeah. because it's it's not just the um diversity that we see or the representation that we see for the queer community through um Beatrice and Ava it's also the fact that we see a diverse uh geographically diverse cast and you know yeah. it's so valuable for people to see people who look like them on screen um you know it's it's yeah. the way that people know that they're not alone and they're in a safe space um consuming their media I think it's always so beautiful and so valuable um to have a show like Warrior None exist that says you are here we see you we want you to feel at home with us again my opinion yeah. but it's it um it is such a beautiful and valuable experience I like acting as sort of like um the bridge between you guys mm. and then fans um and so I can speak from the fans heart they are very grateful for you guys creating this space that they can feel at home um it's our pleasure the fandom is mm -hmm. amazing for the last couple of months in amongst it for season two I've just been like whoa you guys are awesome um I, oh yeah I, like there's so much beautiful fan art and so much just incredible content that they've been putting out over these past two years you know fighting already so hard for a season three it's yeah. in my opinion that you shouldn't have to fight for a third season or for you know shows that you love but you know it's what you have to do in this day and age so the fight is you on. gotta do what you gotta do it's just so inspiring so when did you first um and i realized the intensity of the love of these fans i mean pretty much as soon as the first season came out um uh we started doing warren on wednesdays which was like yep. every wednesday when the show was just when the show was new we'd watch a watch an episode or two and then we would schedule a time on Twitter and they could ask the questions for a certain amount of time and we would be available to answer them. That's awesome. It wasn't always all of us. Yeah. Um, sometimes it was just one or two of us, but we always tried to make it, make it happen. And I mean, the responses were amazing. People are, people are really, truly, um, there are some amazing people out there, amazing oh. artists, amazing writers, just like the enthusiasm has been overwhelming and, and I'm very grateful for it. I mean, they're the ones who made season two happen, so why wouldn't why wouldn't we be more, yeah. even more grateful than we are <laughs> uh but no it's it's incredible it's an, it's amazing to know that that my character that Beatrice has been able to give other people you know courage and, and a little bit of belief in themselves yeah. that they can see themselves reflected in, in the media that they watch yeah um yeah no I think I'm I'm just incredibly humbled I never think about it as you know you're special to so many people yeah. but it's like You've just allowed so many people and like access to yourself. Yep. Um, so it's it's more like this just another way to share with people. Um yeah. That's a beautiful way of thinking about it. Very grateful. So <laughs> <laughs> Grazie um, mille. Are there any sort of messages that you would like to send to the fans for this fight that they're undertaking for you guys? Yes, remember to eat and feed yourself and sleep. <laughs> drink your water stay hydrated I need to remember that too um Same. yeah um it's a real problem other than that you know take care of yourself we'll do our best <laughs> you know we keep watching it I keep watching it yep I am streaming it <laughs> being like play 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 play, 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 play. play. yep <laughs> just background background yeah. noise that's what I've been doing the last two days <laughs> yeah and, and we'll we'll do our very best to to get it renewed again I reckon it's gonna happen More. I've got, we want more. got complete <laughs> more. <laughs> so when we get a season three, um, there's no ifs in my mind. It's always a when. What do you hope um, for sort of Avatrice or for Beatrice in in the season three? For Beatrice, I hope we we really see her going through the, this transformation of, you know, I have committed to living true to myself yep. and 
that's not always easy it's not like it just happens being like oh I'm true to myself now oh everything's great yeah. you know um, you go <laughs> I through wish. like a I wish that'd be like, so oh, I'm good to myself again and yeah. I've got to go back and kind of retrace my steps and I think I, I would really hope that we see a little bit of that um that struggle kind of an everyday life kind of feeling a little bit yeah but I mean Lilith does say that there's a holy war coming so <sighs> in what little corner can I live in my normal little life obviously there has to be a grand reunion um yes. with with Ava and uh yeah I'm, I'm hoping that we get to see some of Ava's time on the other side as well so that we kind of don't get fed too early with the reunion it has yeah. to kind of be drawn out a little bit yeah yeah I, drawn out a little bit it's always been a slow burn Ava so I think that it would only yeah. make sense for that to uh for it to not come in episode one. But yeah, I, I I would hope there's a grand reunion and and we'll find two very different, I think, versions of each character when we when we do reunite. Yeah, hopefully. So, yeah, that's my prediction. So mm-hmm. that's sort of where our questions wrap up. It's a little finish the line game. I'm going to give you a line and you just need to tell me what comes next or, you know, if mm. you can't remember it, you can give me the ballpark and I'll, I'll finish it for you. There are no stakes. Ava says, you're jealous. That's absurd. <laughs> Beatrice says, I don't want you to die. Ava says, I'm trying very hard to avoid that myself. Something yes. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smashed it. Yeah. You know, I'd like to avoid that myself, which yeah, such, again, we're talking about that scene, but it was such an intense moment. And that little ounce of comedy just really just made it go like, okay, oh. we can take a breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're live. We're live, guys. Yep. Everybody's alive. Everything's okay. Beatrice, it smells lemony. That's because it's a lemon drop? That's why it's called a lemon drop. <laughs> Just yelling it in your face in the crowded bar. Yeah, which was quiet. It was very quiet in that yeah. bar when we were filming. <laughs> and they were like, can you speak louder? As if it's like loud. And I'm like, I feel like I'm screaming yeah. already. <laughs> Everybody's like silent. I think that scene is definitely oh, yeah. like up there with the fan favorites all time favorite scene. Didn't we start with wine? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> Just the complete like... I don't know. It felt like very eighteen-year-old panic. Just like, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, like te- pure terror. Yeah, which yeah. I mean, it tracks. I'm, it makes sense, but uh, yeah. it is hilarious to watch from somebody who I guess is meant to be like 23, 24. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Beatrice says, "Be free." Ava says, "I love you." Yeah, she does. She does, <laughs> and every fan's heart broke. Um, yes. Tomb, that, tombstone makers got very busy after that one rip all of us <laughs> literally right like we're at the end of our of our time together from a personal note you just you guys all just destroyed me this season it was like <laughs> you set me through this emotional Thank roller coaster you. yeah warrior nun is one of the best written shows that i've ever watched in my life yeah and so it is it makes sense <laughs> how much time was put into it how much love was put into it um and how yeah. much the fans love it back yes again all i can say is thank you to you and thank you to your yeah. ensemble and the crew and everybody involved in making it happen yes thank you to simons thank you to david thank you to everybody <laughs> yes yes exactly <laughs> for making the show happen Yes, an incredible yeah, we show. We wouldn't so, be here without everybody. Okay, so everybody, please stream seasons one and two of Worry and None on Netflix everywhere in the world. Um, it's currently at number four in trending in Australia. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think any Australians watching, get on it. We can do better. I know I know us. We can do better. Um, so <laughs> like, honestly, hometown, come on, work yourselves out. Um, so um, rewatch it as many times as you can and let's show Netflix that it has indeed earned its season three. This story isn't even close to being finished so there's so much more to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me christina um i'd absolutely no, love to do this again uh post season three or uh for any project that you've got coming up in the future i would love to check. absolutely everybody please uh subscribe here if you'd like to see more warrior nun content also check back on the content i have done for motherland fort salem uh have a lovely lovely afternoon christina um Thank you. Bye. Bye.